Hello everybody, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and this in front of me here is the brand new Pivot Switchblade. You can tell straight away just by looking at it that the new Switchblade is very different to the old version. The name is the same and it's still compatible with both 29 inch and 27.5 plus wheels, but almost everything else has changed. In this video, I'm gonna be going through some of those changes and I'll also be talking about my experience of testing this bike right here. However, there's a load more information on this bike over at flowmountainbike.com. So make sure you follow the link in the video description below to read the full review of the new Pivot Switchblade. Now for a start, the rear shock no longer mounts underneath the top tube. You'll still find a DW-Link suspension design, but the shock now sits vertically in front of the seat tube. This more compact arrangement allows for greater standover clearance while still leaving room inside the main frame for a water bottle. That even goes for the extra small frame size, which is a new addition to the range. Compared to the outgoing model, the new switchblade does keep the 160mm travel fork, though it pumps up rear travel from 135mm to 142mm. In terms of travel, that puts it right alongside the likes of the Ibis Ripmo, the Santa Cruz Hightower, the Norco Sight, Giant Rain 29, and the Specialized Stump Jumper. Similarities aside, Pivot is keen to stipulate that the Switchblade is not an enduro bike. That's what the Firebird 29 is for. Instead, the Switchblade is pitched as a pure all-mountain bike. This is reflected in the 66 degree head angle, which is on the conservative side these days for a bike with a Fox 36 Grip 2 fork on the front. It is over a degree slacker than the old model though, and the seat tube is also steeper at 75 and a half degrees. The rear center length is still very compact at just 430 millimeters, though reach measurements have grown a healthy 10 to 20 millimeters over the old switchblade, helping to increase the overall wheelbase length. Superboost spacing remains out back and that allows the back end to be kept nice and short while still having huge tyre clearance. There's room for up to a 29 by 2.6 inch tyre or a 27.5 by 2.8 inch tyre in the back of this frame. When switching between wheel sizes, there's a flip chip inside the upper rocker link, which offers high and low positions depending on which wheel size you're running. The frame features beautifully CNC machined alloy links, big diameter Enduro Max Seal cartridge bearings, and slick anodized pivot hardware. The internal cable routing is equally well thought out, with large entry ports for threading the cables in and out of the frame. Just pull the cable tight, then snug down the bolt-on caps to secure the lines and eliminate any internal cable rattle. While we're talking bells and whistles, the switchblade is also Fox Live Valve ready. As with the Mach 4 SL, there's a specific mounting point underneath the top tube for the live valve battery pack, along with room for the rear mounted sensor on the inside of the non-drive side dropout. There are six different build options available in the Switchblade. Australian pricing kicks off at $8,999 for the Race XT model and goes up to a staggering $19,999 for the top of the range XX1 Axis model with the Fox Live Valve upgrade. The Switchblade will also be available as a standalone frame set. However, it will only be available in carbon fiber. There are no plans to introduce an aluminum version. The model I've been riding for the past week is the Switchblade Pro XT slash XTR. And this bike here sells for $10,999 and comes with a 12 speed Shimano drivetrain along with four piston XT brakes. There's a Fox factory series suspension package plus a Kashima gold transfer dropper post. You also get DT Swiss wheels, a Maxxis Minion tire combo and carbon fiber handlebars. All up, our medium test bike weighs bang on 14 kilograms, and that's with the tires set up tubeless and weighed without pedals. Setting up the rear shock on the switchblade is made super easy thanks to a clip-on sag indicator. All you need to do is align the shock's o-ring with the red line on the indicator to hit 30% sag. As for specific compression and rebound settings, I've listed all of that in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com, so make sure you follow that link in the video description to read the full review. More importantly though, how does it ride on the trail? Compared to the previous switchblade, reach on the medium size has grown from 440 millimeters to 455 millimeters. That's quite roomy for a bike in this travel bracket. And since the seat angle isn't crazy steep, it gives the cockpit a purposeful and slightly stretched out feel, 
particularly with those 780 millimeter wide low rise handlebars. The result is a comfortable riding position that suits all day pedaling on varied terrain. I will say that the Switchblade is a highly proficient climber. It's got great posture on the ascents and the efficient DW Link suspension is about as stable as it comes. Put simply, it rides a lot lighter than it is. The DPX2 shock has a three position compression lever, which gives you open, medium and firm settings. It is plenty efficient in the open setting though. And even on my 10 kilometer road commute to and from the trails, I never felt the urge to reach for the little blue lever. The suspension does bob a bit when you're heaving out of the saddle, but since there's no lockout on the fork, the rear shock is honestly the least of your worries. Stay seated and the switchblade is steady and composed. There's good clearance under the cranks, which is partly due to the efficient DW Link suspension design, which prevents the shock from wallowing in its travel. It isn't just on smooth climbs where the switchblade shines though. In fact, the more technical the climb, the better it gets. With its grippy tires, efficient suspension, roomy cockpit, and that not too slack head angle, the switchblade relishes in being heaved around on lumpy terrain. It responds well to power moves and it negotiates tight, awkward lines better than any bike I've ridden in recent memory. At faster riding speeds, it hovers above Chanda remarkably well with a suspension free to move without being restricted by pedaling inputs. Pivot has done a bang up job of decoupling chain torque from the rear shock, allowing for consistent traction and smoother pedaling. Turning around to head back down the mountain and the switchblade feels more poppy than other bikes I've ridden with a DPX2 shock. That's because on the inside, it isn't actually an off the shelf DPX2. We're not talking a different shim stack tune here either, but rather a whole new compression base valve and selector plate, which Pivot helped to design and test alongside Fox Racing shocks. The result is a custom shock that combines the lively and poppy feel of a DPS with the big hit consistency of the DPX2. The Switchblade also has quite a progressive leverage ratio. Along with a stiff frame, short back end and low overall weight, it's a total grasshopper on flowy jump trails. However, the progressive spring curve did mean I struggled to use full travel on the switchblade, even when I was horribly casing jumps at the Mystic Bike Park in Bright. The back end was also feeling a touch chattery on sections of washboard braking bumps. Out of the box, the Fox Air Can has a 0.6 volume spacer installed. Being on the lighter side, I decided to downsize to a 0.4 volume spacer. To maintain 30% sag, I increased air pressure slightly back up to 185 psi. The result was an immediate improvement to the suspension action, with a more fluid feel that allowed me to make better use of the travel. The back end was still sufficiently progressive. I never once hit full bottom out during testing, despite the back end sucking up some pretty big, awkward landings. This balanced well with the 36 fork, giving the switchblade an impressive ability to track and float over really rough terrain. On higher speed single track, the switchblade is an easy handling bike. Compared to slacker bikes I've tested lately, specifically the Norco Sight, which has similar dimensions but a two degree slacker head angle. I found I didn't have to lean the switchblade over as heavily through the corners. I also didn't need to exaggerate my weight distribution over the front tire just to keep it sticking on less steep terrain. With the shorter front end though, the switchblade doesn't feel quite as planted when riding really steep, wide open descents. A slacker head angle would no doubt help here, but it would result in compromised performance elsewhere. Ultimately, the switchblade is more of an all rounder than a white knuckled enduro sled. Indeed, the agile handling is the biggest strength of this bike. It dispatches tight switchbacks cleanly, and thanks to the tight chassis and stable suspension, it threads through back-to-back -back berms with impressive accuracy. It's mighty nimble for a bike with big wheels and this much travel. Overall, I've been really impressed with the Pivot Switchblade. Certainly with this second generation platform, Pivot has firmly re-established the Switchblade as the versatile trail tamer as the original. It's just been made better in every single way. It is expensive, but you're getting a masterfully engineered carbon frame that is finished to a very high level. The DW Link suspension is absolutely superb, and the custom DPX2 shock is a big contributing factor to the switchblade's control over any impact that's fed into the rear wheel. Traction is tip top, and the bike's ability to float you over rough, rocky terrain while maintaining such a neutral pedal feel is quite unreal. Now, if you'd like to read the full review of the new Pivot Switchblade, make sure you head over to flowmountainbike.com or just follow the link in the video description below. We'd love to hear what you think of the Pivot Switchblade, and if you've got any questions for us about this bike, make sure you drop those into the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Toodaloo!